How's that? Is that better? <laughs> what a start. <laughs> All right, we'll try this one more time. Good morning. Good morning. All right, you all know me by now. I always do it twice. All right, so here we go. One more time. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, that's much better. Much better. All right. Uh, let's pray. We've got an awesome message for you this morning, so let's pray first. Dear Father God, we just thank you for this awesome, amazing church. Thank you for these awesome, awesome people, this amazing pastor team here. Thank you for your incredible word. God, you allowed this to be written for us. There's power in the word. There's power in the Holy Spirit. We are welcoming you again, Holy Spirit, and me and us here in this church. We trust you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, just lead me. Have me speak your words. What do you want me to say this morning to them? I praise your name. In holy name I pray. Amen. All right, let me test, make sure we're good to go here. And here we go. Okay. All right, so we got a fantastic message for you this morning. Uh, the subject is uh, the spiritual family and church life. So uh, just so you all know, I am uh, been praying what to speak about for months and months and months. Started last year, and I am actually going through my favorite discipleship book, uh, actually, I'm going to call it a discipleship guide, but uh, right now we're in chapter 7, which is the spiritual, uh, spiritual family and church life, and the next message will be on prayer and worship, which you guys are doing a fantastic job in. So I just want to give, give you all hats up. I just love your worship team. Uh, I, I love all the songs you picked. <laughs> They're just great songs, and I still love and enjoy the children when they come up here, and, it's, and think about it, just instilling the Word of God in the children's mind so at such an early age. I didn't have that. We didn't have that growing up, and you're doing so many awesome things, so I'm very, very impressed by that. So praise God for what you're doing here in your church. All right, let's get into this awesome, amazing message called the spiritual family. So this morning, I'm going to talk about some really cool things, the, spirit, the spiritual family, uh, a lot of scripture verses to go over. We'll definitely hear God's Word this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about church life, what's church life all about. Uh, and then, of course, I love to give you some challenges so I get some tests for you here this morning. All okay? right, so let's get into this. All right, so the very first picture is uh, I've been struggling with trying to find the best picture I could of a, of a family. So here we go. So this is a great looking, ideal family, right? And if you look at behind the scenes here, it looks like they're leaving a church is what it looks like to me. But you'll notice a lot of things in this picture. You'll see uh, grandparents here. You'll see children. You'll see grandchildren. You'll see men. You'll see women. And uh, so I wanted to come up with a definition of a family. So here's what a family is. It is all the descendants of a common ancestor, a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. So that's a definition of a family. But remember that today's topic is what? What is the spiritual family? So we have a little different meaning here. So here we go. So there's three types of general families. There's what's called the genetic family, the work family, and a spiritual family. So what is a generic family? Real simple, that's the bloodline, right? So I wanna ask you a question right here. Who in this room here actually picked their parents? Anybody pick their parents? No one's raising their family hand, is it, right? <laughs> you did not pick your families. But we're going to give you a question here in a second on another choice that you are allowed to make. All right, work environment. Uh, we have family, friends at work. We're going to talk about that in just a second. And then there's another item on the list here. It's called the spiritual family, which is what our message is all about this morning. All right, what's the genetic family? Well, again, like I said, it's the bloodline. It's the family that you came from. So your parents, your grandparents, that's obvious, right? It's called the blood family. But now here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about who in your blood family, who in your line of family is saved. Are your parents saved? Are your grandparents saved? Are your siblings saved? Are your children saved? Are your children's children saved? Good question, right? So we're going to talk about that here this morning. We're going to talk about the spiritual family. All right, who is the work family? There's a great picture of a work family right here. Uh, these are friends at work, some who may be believers, and of course many may not be believers in your work. But from the spiritual side, people who you can talk to, 
people you can pray with, people you can share things with. So, do you actually have some believers in your work family? So, I've been at my new job now for one year, and I can tell you exactly who they are. So, the two owners are believers, and that's probably about it. And uh, so, that's my mission field. My mission field is to uh, share the gospel with the ones that are not. Also, I have my work family through my customers, right? A lot of my customers I call on. Uh, some are saved, some are not. One of my favorite customers is right here, Lemmy. <laughs> he's one of my favorite customers, and he's on fire for the Lord, and it's a pleasure to bond with him a lot. I uh, also have a lot of uh, uh, manufacturers, representatives that I work with, uh, and I have a lot of uh, distributors I work with. I just was traveling this past week in Texas, and sure enough, I'm traveling with my reps and getting to know them and, and uh, sharing the gospel with them, and lo and behold, the manager that manages the whole team, he is a very strong believer. And he has a home Bible study. He meets every single week. So we prayed together. And it was just a great, great little time with him. But he told me, the rest of the staff is not safe. So that's our missions field, is through that work environment right there. All right, here's the favorite subject of the day. It's called the spiritual family. All right, so who's your spiritual family? Well, you might have a home Bible study. Some of you might have a home Bible study uh, where you invite neighbors, friends, whoever, to come over to your home and you, and you share the Word of God together. And uh, you experience uh, things uh, that you talk about during the week. So when you engage with your spiritual family, uh, are you talking about successes, right? Are you talking about the things that you had success with uh, during the week? Uh, are you also discipling? So I want to know who you are discipling at, at home in your own family. Who are you discipling in your neighborhood? Who are you discipling in your work environments? It's a good question. It's a good challenging question, isn't it? And what can we pray for you now? So when you come into an environment like this, right, it's church, right? You come in and you talk, family, but are you talking about your successes during the week, right? This is a great place to do that. Talk about the successes you had, your spiritual successes during the week. That's an important place because we want to hear that. I want to hear what successes you're having uh, spiritual successes you have. I love when somebody walks up to me and says, hey, Jeff, I prayed for someone a few weeks ago and they got healed. Oh, I just love hearing that. I love hearing the challenges you know, where somebody has pancreatic cancer. We pray and pray and pray and there's been no luck. And I had somebody come to me not too long ago and said, hey, I prayed over somebody with pancreatic cancer and they got completely healed. I rarely hear things like that, but I love those stories. Those are talking about the successes uh, in our spiritual, uh, our spiritual work walk. So the spiritual family is, again, it's your home, where you have an environment in your home with your own personal family. The spiritual family is also the ones that you know are saved at work, right? And I know several in our, my work environment. It uh, could be your neighborhood, right? Your neighborhood could have friends that are saved. So this is what uh, we're talking about here. This is what's called the spiritual family. All right, so challenge question number one. How many people in your genetic and work family will you see in heaven? Is this your mission in life? It's a good question, isn't it? And at the very end of the message today, we're going to have a very cool chance and a cool opportunity to pray for those that are not safe just yet. So we're going to pray for that in a minute here. But that's a challenge question for you, number one. All right, let's look at some scripture. Matthew 20, 12, 48 through 50 says, Jesus replied, Who is my mother and who is my brother? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister. So let me set this up a little bit. So Jesus just got through speaking to a large, very large crowd. And he was sharing a lot of information about that. And after he got done, he walked back and his family was nudging him. Hey, hey, I want to talk to you. Everybody wants to talk to Jesus. And uh, he made a comment uh, back. And this is the phrase that he used. He said, who is my mother and my brother? <clears throat> you know, the friends were saying, the neighbors were saying, hey, you got to talk to your mother and brother. He says, who really is my mother and my brother? So this is a great deep subject right here because guess what he's talking about? Guess what Jesus is referring to in this verse? He's referring to the spiritual family, isn't he? Right? So the ones that you will see in heaven. So again, think about your family, your cousins, aunts, uh, mother, father, ones that are not saved. 
Also think about the people in your work environment. <clears throat> That's why you're there. That's your mission field, right? Is to share the gospel, perhaps with the ones at work. And there's a lot of rules. Some people say you can, you can't do that. But there's, a way, there's ways around that. But the message, the message is that's your mission field. So Jesus is specifically talking about the spiritual family in this verse right here. All right, he said, what is the will of my father? And here we go. So what is the will of my father? So there's four basic things we could talk about under the category of the will of my father. Love God, number one, right? Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Number two, love your neighbor as what? As yourself, right? So that's another great item. Number three, go and make disciples of all nations. End of Matthew and Mark talks about our mission statement. And number four, I add this one, because we are, as Christians, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We're also led by the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times we forget about the Holy Spirit. We ignore Him. But it's another part of the Trinity, isn't it? God, Father, and the Holy Spirit. And you can't ignore Him. So I've changed my prayer lately. So when I used to pray, I used to pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now when I pray... I say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in me. I trust you, Holy Spirit, and I want you to lead me today, Holy Spirit. So I'm adding some things. I want to include the Holy Spirit because I want to do the will of the Father. Make sense? Okay, very good. All right, let's talk about church life a little bit, then we're going to come back to <clears throat> uh, the spiritual family. Church life uh, falls with five major items. And the first one is the victorious church. Number two, the body of Christ. Number three, church leadership. Four, church discipline. And number five is holy communion. So we're going to talk about each one of these here. Now, I will tell you, the very first one, the victorious church, I had a hard time with that one. And uh, luckily, I have an awesome, amazing wife, so we had a chance to talk about this, and she was kind enough to help, help set me free here. But here's the victorious church. So why do we call it, why do we even call it the Victorious Church? It's a great question, isn't it? Why do we even start there? Why is it called the Victorious Church? Well, it's real simple. We know that we are, have already won the battle. As Christians, once we receive Christ as Lord and Savior, guess what? You're part of the spiritual family. That's it. You've won. You've got it. You're in. You get to go to heaven. That's exactly the plan. So we've won the battle no matter what happens here on earth. We have already won. The next step <clears throat> in victorious ship is equipping us. So that's what we're doing right now. That's what discipleship is doing. It's sharing uh, what God's Word says. It's utilizing, fully, uh, fully utilizing the Holy Spirit. Uh, this, like this morning, this is what we're doing. We're equipping you for battle because as soon as you leave these doors here, you're going out into the battlefield, aren't you? Right? And you need to have tools, you've got to have weapons to go with you to fight in the battlefield. So we're equipping you this morning. Number three, uh, walk in faith. We can't do anything without our faith. Number four, we live by the word of God. This is our Bible. This is our testimony. This is God's word right here. And it's filled with what? It's filled with power. So when we talk about speaking God's word, it actually has power in it. Number five is empowered by the Holy Spirit. So again, I've changed my prayer because I want to empower, I want to invoke the Holy Spirit in me to do and say and tell me where to go. I want him to use him more and more. I want to be obedient to him. And the way to do that is to invoke him more. Make sense? Okay. That is the victorious church. What is the body of Christ? Well, let's take a look at Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. And you're going to see something really amazing come out of this verse this morning. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Guess what that verse is talking about? <laughs> it's as simple as I can make it, folks. It's talking about the spiritual family. So if you're not in the family right now, right, perhaps you're still seeking, maybe you're still thinking about what life's all about. And all I can tell you is that when I decided to receive Christ, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I knew right then, boom, I knew right then I was part of the family. I was part of the spiritual family, which you probably all are right now. So for those that have not made that decision yet, maybe today's the day. <clears throat> you know, maybe today's the day. Some family or friends that you're thinking of this morning, we're going to have a chance to pray at the very end here for some special people. 
But perhaps today's the day that you finally made a decision to say, hey, if I just look outside, I see some interesting things. I see how you know, we breathe in <clears throat> air and breathe out carbon uh, dioxide, and the trees do the opposite. Man did not invent that. God created that. Why do we have two eyes, one nose? Why, do we, why are we designed like this? Man didn't do that. God designed that. There's so many signs outside of this that point to God. So we know that there's a God, <clears throat> so how do we have a relationship with him? Well, good news. He's left us with an incredible Bible. And if you call, I don't call it a Bible. Anybody remember what I call it? A spiritual transformation is <laughs> exactly what I call it. It's a miracle thing. The Word of God is going to transform us, right? So that's really what that is. So once you receive Christ, perhaps today's the day. You realize that you've sinned, realize that you've made some mistakes. Perhaps today's the day that you would like to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. So all you have to do is pray to receive Him into your heart. And guess what He'll do? He'll bless that. He'll honor that. And He'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. Right now, this moment, right now, He will do that. And when you have that happen, you'll feel pretty special inside, and also you'll know without a shadow of a doubt you are automatically part of the spiritual family. Amen? Amen. Okay. Church leadership. Church leadership is, uh, is uh, actually five, five pieces here. It's the pastor, senior pastor. Uh, it could be your ministers, it's your elders, it's your deacons, and of course it's you all right here. That's all part of church and church leadership. I'm going to talk more about this next time I come back, uh, but there's a lot we can talk about when it comes to church leadership. <clears throat> church discipline, uh, certainly there's issues that come up from time to time, <laughs> and I've had that happen at another church where I had two good Christian men not, <clears throat> not getting along with each other, so... I had to elevate it to the pastors, and we had a chance to meet and talk about it, and we resolved it, and they're, they're, they're good friends. But two Christian, Christian men could not get along. I had a chance to, to bring it to the church's attention, and we had a chance to deal with it. And uh, perhaps I recommend that here, too. So you have a fantastic pastor here. He is wide open to helping in any situation that you might have. His heart is for you, and uh, that makes total sense for me as well. Okay. Holy Communion is another part of the key part here of the whole process. And uh, I want to break down a couple things here with Holy Communion. I know you do Holy Communion fairly often. Uh, we do it in our church extremely often as well. But Holy Communion is a couple special things. Number one, the first word is the key of the whole thing. Number one, it is a holy and sanctified, sanctified event. So Holy Communion means it's a very holy, it means it's a very sanctified event. Uh, event that's going on. Number two, communing with everyone together. <clears throat> so holy communion actually means you're communing, right? We're all communing together. And number three, I'm not sure if you know this one, but holy communion is also done for spiritual protection and clarification reasons. Did you know if you ever need protection, if you need support, you actually can do communion or come to your pastor and do communion in your church right here. That's a way to get uh, spiritual protection, and also it glorifies God when you do that. All right, let's take a look at another really cool verse here. Acts 2, 42 through 47. We're talk back to talking about church family now. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to fellowship, the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Oh my gosh, there's a lot in this verse here, right? There's a lot here. But we're talking about the spiritual family, right? So let's break down a few things here that I want to mention. What's the very first thing that came out of this? The first thing is they devoted themselves to each other. So are you devoted to your spiritual brothers and sisters? You know, are you devoted to your spiritual family, number one? The breaking of bread. Uh, that means eating together, right? So do you eat together with your friends outside of church? You know, do you guys spend time together eating together? I know my buddy Lemmy, he loves to eat. He's eating all the time. i got to feed him constantly. <laughs> oh, my gosh, he eats a lot. Uh, and also, do you devote time together to pray? And I'm going to give you a really interesting story here in just a second. Uh, everyone was also filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles, 
and the believers were all together and had everything in common. All right, so I got to tell you about our story, really interesting story here. So I was uh, in Texas all, all last week. I got back Thursday night. It landed really late. My wife was awesome to pick me up. But uh, I always like to look you know, on the plane to see if there's anybody I, I know. <clears throat> so sure enough, sitting in first class, was a well-known celebrity, and uh, I knew him, and not many people did. But I'm sure you've heard uh, some of these names before. I'm sure you know some of the well-known uh, evangelists out there. I'm sure you all heard of Billy Graham. You know who Billy Graham is, right? And his son, Franklin Graham. Well, there's another young man that's a very strong evangelist out there, and his name is Todd White. I don't know if you know that name, but Todd White's very, very famous out here. Todd White is sitting sitting in, uh, on my plane, first class, and I walked, soon, as soon as I saw him, I walked up and said, Todd, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. He says, how you doing, brother? <laughs> so we bonded a little bit, and, uh, and then we flew to uh, Detroit. And as soon as we landed, uh, he got off the plane ahead of me just by a, a few rows. And as soon as I walked down the jetway and I walked into the, the lobby, here's Todd. He's got his uh, hands over a lady. He's praying with a lady in a wheelchair. And I walked right up to him, and I put my hands on him, and we prayed together for a lady who was very sick uh, in a wheelchair. So we prayed quite a bit right there, Todd and I. He never met me, and, but I've seen him many times on video. So, uh, and then he couldn't help but say, okay, who are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm just Jeff. And uh, I've just found, been following the Lord for well over 40 years. And uh, I mentioned a lot of programs that I'm doing. Uh, he's here for the conference called the Power and Love Conference, which is in Toledo. So he's doing that right now. And I said, uh, this, is, this, is a God, this is how God works here. This is just amazing to me. He says, well, Jeff, uh, what we're doing is we're, we're speaking to the kids, uh, adults, but we're trying to empower them. We're trying to encourage them to uh, do the right thing, follow God. We're trying to encourage them to be saved. And then we also have to disciple them. And I said, you know, Tom, I'm so glad you said that. Discipleship is, is a key part of the whole process here, isn't it? He says, yes. I said, so what, what are you doing to disciple some? What are you doing to disciple these people? And guess what he said? You're not going to leave this. We're following the purple book. <laughs> right out of the box, he said, I'm following the purple book. I said, Todd, you're not going to believe this, but I'm speaking Sunday on the spiritual family. I went through my whole book. He says, that's amazing. So we had a moment right there. I thought it was always cool. I did not expect that, but to me, that's God. God just, you know, he just shows up in these cases all the time. But God shows up, so Todd White and his whole staff are promoting uh, the Purple Book. And I just thought that was so cool to hear that. So I was very impressed by that. So that was, uh, that was, uh, that was this week. So that was, uh, that was really cool. So that's an example when I met another believer just like that, we just bonded and we just had a, had a really cool moment together. I just think that's so cool. And I bet you do the same thing here. You know, when you come in on Sundays, you meet people, you meet people you haven't seen in a while, maybe you immediately go and bond with them. But that's why I wanted to mention this, because if you look at the second sentence here, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. So do you do that here? When you come in after your long week of working, do you come in and talk about that? Do you talk about your successes? It's very, very important to do that because that builds each other up. Okay, I want to hear what you had. I want to, I want to share my successes. I want to hear your successes that you had during the week. It's important to do that because it builds each other up. And then last thing that says, all the believers were together and they had everything in common. What do you think that's talking about, having things in common? What do we have in common? Yeah, we have so much in common. We have the same Bible in common. We have the same God. We have the same Savior. We have the same Holy Spirit. We have the same things in common, right? So that's what that's talking about. We have all those things in common. All right, there's some more of the verse here. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke, they ate again, so they broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were saved. So there's a lot in this verse right here. <laughs> Let's break it down a little bit. First thing uh, he says is they sold their property and possessions and gave to anyone in need. So are you doing that too? It was very obvious to me that your church is doing this. You're building churches. You're, you're just infiltrating the world right here. I mean, having two or three churches in the Philippines is just impressive to me. 
some of the big churches aren't doing that. So I think that's amazing to me that you're doing that. But it's also talking about your possessions that you have personally, right? It's not just the church's possessions. What possessions do you have? There, maybe there's something you have uh, an influx of, right? I remember when we owned our, our business, we were always getting furniture in, and some furniture would be rejected, and we had a surplus of furniture. And we just love, 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 love uh, finding a needy family that needed something. And I remember delivering furniture and couches and chairs and windows and all this merchandise. It was just thrilling to help other people out. So think about that. Pray about that. If there's any possessions that you have, any extra things you have that you could be donating to somebody. Gee, Jeff, I don't know who to give it to. Well, you pray about that. You pray about that and you ask the Holy Spirit to tell you. Sometimes he'll give you a person in mind or maybe the church needs it. And I can't tell you every time you pray about that, the Lord will show up and bless you with a way to handle that. Here we go again. Every day they continue to meet together and eat, so they eat a lot. <laughs> I know that. So that's a way to commune with each other is, is, uh, is eating. That's fine. Uh, also says here something very interesting. It says that they add it to their number daily. So what do you think that's talking about? Well, the wife and I started a program. We actually, we started a program many, many years ago. Uh, we're going to kick up another program again. Uh, where we're going to invite people to our home. But we're going to do it a little differently this time. We used to invite a lot of believers to our home and have Bible studies. We're going to tweak it a little bit. We're going to do something a little different this time. We're going to have, invite maybe two families. One family is the believer. The other family is a non-believer. So we want to do something a little different now, and that is uh, invite families that perhaps are not saved. So why would we do that? Well, because we want those non-Christians to see what it's like for Christians to have life, see what it's like. They want, we want them to see church life from a Christian perspective. So that's why we want to do that, and it's a way to disciple, right? So we're going to start a program, I'm not sure how often, maybe once a month, but we're going to, with so many people we know that I'm sure would come over to our home, but we want to invite a Christian and a non-Christian family and start something like this uh, because we want, to, we want to add to the kingdom. We want to pray for those that are not sight, and we want to add to the kingdom here. Okay, make sense? Okay. All right, so Acts uh, 2.42, just summarize it. Uh, believers eat together. Uh, believers share wonders together. Uh, believers gave away their possessions. They had everything in common, and they also prayed together. So very important when you get together with believers that you pray together. All right, so moving on from the spiritual family, uh, why do we even need a spiritual family? I've always been asked that question. So here we go. Here's five reasons why we need a spiritual family. Number one, deal with life challenges. My gosh, we all struggle with stuff. Anybody here struggle with stuff? No? No one? All right, we got one person, two, <laughs> ah, four. All right. You all struggle with stuff. I struggle with stuff. We all struggle with things. And we have to talk about these things. And on the next page, I'll give you some rules for how to do that. Number two, number two is encouragement. So I love to meet with other believers because I like to, I feel one of my spiritual gifts is encouragement. Same time you meet with me, uh, and that, no matter who you are, what's going on, I, I'm automatically going to try to encourage you. I love encouraging people. Number three is uh, unconditional love, which is our Lord and Savior. He loves us no matter what we've done, what's going on. There's unconditional love. Number four is support. So when you deal with life's challenges, you need support and wisdom. And five, we're all working on a faith journey together. We're all in different parts of that journey. We're all in different stages, right? So it's really good to be able to talk about these things so we can have, uh, get some good advice or get prayed over. It's really good to do those things together. But you've got to have some rules if you have a church spiritual family. You've got to have some rules. Here's five rules that I've listed out that you should adhere to, or at least think about. Number one is when I talk with you, no matter where it is, I mean you no harm. And it's true. I don't mean anyone harm. Number two uh, is our home, actually your church as well, but your, specifically your home is a very safe environment. It's a very safe place to meet. Number three, I want to, be, I want to think about the best for you as a person. Number four, uh, if there's issues that you're dealing with, let's talk about it. Number five, what really matters most in life. So it's good to think about that too. So let me break down a couple of these series I want to talk about. Uh, the second one is a key one. Uh, the, your home is a very safe environment. That's, that's important. I remember 
at, uh, when we were connected with a church in Chicago, a member of family, a woman that was abused by her husband, uh, he had, had to get out of that home, and uh, we opened up our house for that uh, lady and her, and her son to come live with us for, wasn't that long, but we had uh, a, a safe environment for them to come into and live with. So it's important to have your home to be a very, very safe environment. So she was with us uh, several weeks or a month or so, and then she found another place and moved out. But we opened up her home because we wanted to provide a safe environment for somebody. So I've seen situations like, like that. Number three, I want the best for you. So I always have the person's uh, best interest in mind. So it's more than just, you know, let's go solve this quickly and move on. Make sure the other person that you're talking to understands that you have their best interest at heart. Number four, let's talk about it. Uh, had a challenging week, and yesterday, had to work yesterday, <laughs> Saturday. And uh, we had an executive meeting, so we had a lot of issues we are talking about. And there were some heated discussions and some stress there. And, uh, and after the meeting was over, I got a call late uh, yesterday afternoon, and, and we talked about it. We talked about stuff and talked it out. So it's very important that if you're dealing with things that you find someone, you know, friend or family or parent, someone, pastor, to talk about it because they have to have your best interest in mind and talking things through is always very, very helpful. And lastly, uh, what matters most in life? Sometimes we're arguing or discussing things that are trivial and you gotta put big picture in mind. What's the most important thing uh, that's going on here? All right, take another little verse here, and we'll start to wrap up. But God has put the body together, giving great honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body. But that its parts should equal concern, have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, the other part suffers with it. If one party is honored, then the other party rejoices with it. Now you are the part, the body of Christ, and each one of you are part of it. And God has placed you in this church. I love this verse because it's talking about so many cool things. So this is why I'd like to hear uh, well, when you have successes, spiritual successes during the week. Tell me what happened. I want to share in that joy. If you have a challenging situation, let me know because now I have a chance to pray for you during that challenging situation. But also, it also, it's very clear here, and it says it's a body. We are a body. Right now, this is a body. We have arms and legs and different parts of the body. Right now, we are a body. We're a body of Christ right here. And we're all doing different things, right? So it's important to share in that as an organization, as a church. And your pastor is all behind that. He loves to do that. He loves to put you all together. Another great verse. Life needs to be managed by the spiritual gifts. We cannot live life alone. To some, the gift of, and I've spoke on this before, but I listed out all the spiritual gifts, but I'll walk through them real quick, like wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, tongues, giving, mercy, evangelism, helps, hospitality, craftsmanship, <laughs> shepherding, intercession, exhortation, and there's actually a few more. So the body has got, each one of you have got spiritual gifts, right? And you need to know what they are. There's tests you can take. The pastor can help you take tests to figure out what your spiritual gifts are. And he needs to know that because he's managing a church body, right? So he needs to know which ones you have. And he's going to bring things together. If you need help with sickness, he's going to grab people to pray for you for healing. Uh, some of the evangelists, if there's an evangelist event coming up, he'll grab them, those people, and say, we have to go evangelize over here this week. So he's managing that. So we cannot live life alone. So realize there's all kinds of resources here within this church to help you. It's important to stay connected with the people here and your church pastor. Make sense? Okay. All right, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip them for works of service. Okay? So we need tools, right, to equip us to go out in the marketplace. So Christ is actually doing that. He's actually doing that right now. He's actually equipping you. He's giving you, he's loading up your gun for battle. <laughs> but he's equipping you right now. He's giving you power to go do things in the community, whether it's at home or whether it's at work or wherever you may be. He's giving you power to go do those things. It's for the acts of service, which is what he wants us to do. 
Tools to do our job. The Word of God is definitely a tool. Prayer is an awesome, power, powerful tool. The Holy Spirit that's inside you uh, is a tool. And, of course, anointing oil. I know sometimes you anoint oil. I anoint my home. My home, actually, every week I anoint my home with oil. And I bring it to work, too. If people need special prayers at work, I have anointing oil sitting on my desk. People know it's there. And if they want anointing oil over them, I will pray over them for that. So take on oil with you to work. It's a great idea. Uh, so these are the tools to do our job. And they're very powerful tools. The Word of God, the prayer. And I want to just make sure you understand that the Holy Spirit is an awesome, amazing, powerful tool. And you have to activate it. You have to be obedient to him, but you have to activate it. You have to ask him, okay? Include him in the things you're doing. Include him at work. Include him at home. Include him no matter where you go. Include the Holy Spirit. He's the equal part of the God Trinity. Make sense? Okay. All right. Also, uh, for equipping you or communion, uh, that's a way to, to have a powerful tool. Communion is actually a weapon in some respects. We know about prayer. Celebration, I think, is a cool tool because to hear successes that you had during the week or the church is having success. I just think about the church that you're planning. Future salvations are going to take place in that environment right there. And that is a victory. That is a cel something to celebrate from. That is awesome. It's amazing to hear that. Worship music. I hope you understand, worship team. You get a home run today. These songs were just tremendous that you selected. That's a tool. That's a powerful tool. That's a weapon, actually. Worship music is a weapon. There's so many biblical stories uh, where music was used to fight, fight things. So worship is a very powerful tool, and you guys are all part of that. I love, love that part of your church service. All right, we're going to wrap up here. And I want to end the service in a very different, different way, something that uh, we may not have done before. But uh, I know you pray, you're a praying church, and I know you're praying for celebrations, but here's what I'm going to do right now. We're going to wrap up with the following, the following prayers. Here's what I'd like to do, something really a little bit different, a little bit unusual. I would like you to stand right now. If you don't mind standing right now, we're going to wrap up with a prayer. And here's what we're going to do. The whole message today is spiritual family. And the spiritual family is what? It's your own genetic family. It could be your work family. It could be your neighbors in your family. Here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to picture in your mind one person. One person. It could be any person that you know that is not saved. Okay? Picture that person right now, and it could be a family member. Think of your family. Think of your, maybe your parents are not saved, your siblings, your kids. Think of one person maybe in your genetic family that's not safe. Think of a person uh, maybe in your work environment that you work. Some of you have jobs in work. Think of one person there that's in your work environment that is not safe. Think of your neighborhood right now. Maybe your next door neighbor. Maybe the other neighbor. Maybe across the street. Maybe one of your neighbors that you on your heart right now. Maybe they are not safe. Okay, so let's think of one person right now. Just put one person in your mind. My, my example is my cousin. <laughs> my parents, I believe my parents are saved, my kids. Uh, uh, I have five cousins. I think four of the five are saved. And the fifth one is cousin Susie. I'm going to call her out. Uh, she's not saved. She's uh, uh, not there just yet. So, oh, she is on my mind all the time, and I pray for her daily. And some of you might have heard my story about my brother. I prayed for him for 30, well, for 30 years. And it's the final year that uh, uh, I prayed for him that he finally got saved. So if it takes 30 years to me for salvation for someone, guess what? I'm going to pray for 30 years. So here's what I'd like to do right now. <clears throat> I'd like you to picture, close your eyes and picture this person that you have in your mind right now. Again, it could be a family member. It could be somebody at work. It could be a neighbor. Let's close your eyes right now. Let's picture this person in your mind right now. So I'm going to pray over them right now. And, and we're going to pray for their salvation. So, dear Father God, we just thank you for this awesome, amazing message this morning. Thank you for the spiritual family. Thank you for your ultimate spiritual family, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And that once we receive Christ as Lord and Savior, you fill us with the Holy Spirit. We are now activated. We are now part of that, of that spiritual family. I pray for these families, these people that our congregation has lifted up to you right now. 
And I'm sure we're picturing people <clears throat> that are not saved. I'm sure we're picturing people that might be family in our genetic family. We might be picturing a person at work. We might be picturing a neighbor or a friend that we know really well. Right now, I ask the name of Jesus that you just come upon them right now. I ask that you open up their heart to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. I ask that if we can't be used to share the gospel with them, Father God, you bring someone across their path that is saved, that can share the gospel with them. We pray for their salvation right now, this moment, this second. We want to add to the kingdom today, right now. And we also command things that are not of you, the evilness that might be around them. We pray for hearts that are hardened, that we be released. In Jesus' name, we just ask that uh, open their mind, heart, and soul to receive you as Lord and Savior. We know we cannot live without you. We know we can't handle the challenge of life without you. We know that there's power through you. We know that the Holy Spirit is in a loving, loving, amazing God that we just need in our daily life each and every, every hour of the day. And we know that God, you present the peace that surpasses all understanding. We cannot imagine having life without that peace. So we just ask for the salvation to take place right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that you're working right now. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.